Okay, today we're going to talk about a not happy book. When I went into Reagan's room to ask her if she would come and blog on this with me because she just finished it, she says she didn't want to talk about a painful book. But we know that many of you are required to read this book in school, and it may be on that list of you should probably read it once in your life. Yeah, it's a good book. It's just freaking depressing. Yeah, I know. And also, it's one of those books that because so many people are required to read it, you kind of have to be culturally aware. Like, you know, you need to... When people make references to Lord of the Flies, then you understand. You know, you can... You're culturally uh, aware. You're, you're cultured. Because yeah. you've read the most important books of your day. And this has become one of those... Lord of the Flies by William Golding. And so we're going to, Reagan's going to talk about the plot for a minute, and then we're going to try to think about maybe some of the reasons why it is required reading and why it's considered a classic. So go ahead and tell us what it's about. So it's about these boys that um, get like their airplane crashes on this desert island, deserted island. It's not a desert. Okay. Um, and there's no no adult survivors, and there's no girl survivors. So it's all these boys that are like, I don't think any of them are over like, thirteen or fourteen years old. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of little kids as well. So it's about them trying to figure out how to make things work on the island. So what happens? Um, I don't know. Am I supposed to like? We don't need to give the whole plot away, but give us some sense of, like, what's going on on the island. So, um, at the beginning of the book, they, like, get everyone together from the island. It takes a while to get everyone gathered up. And then they, like, have a meeting and they appoint a leader, who they call Chief. And they make a couple of rules. And... They decide that the most important thing to them is to be rescued. And so they decide to have, like, a couple of boys. There's this big hill, like the mountain or whatever, and it's, like, the highest place up. And so they want a fire to always be going there so that, like, if ships come, then they'll see so they that. So get rescued? Yeah. Okay. So they always have, or they're, they're trying to always have boys be feeding the fire there and stuff. And... Okay, so then what happens? So, um... So how do they eat and survive? And what there's a ton there? of fruit. Uh-huh. And, like, just tropical food there. And they eat that. They don't actually have meat until, like, a while into the book. Uh -huh. Because they're all so afraid to kill an animal. And the only one that they know of on the island is, like, a pig. So, but they're all, like, they really want to kill it so they can have meat, but they're all too scared to. There's only one pig? No, there's there's multiple pigs, but, oh. you know. Uh-huh. And so then what happens? Uh, um, I'm not remembering how it goes. So how does the little, how do, how do the little clans, there's the little clans, little groups. So there's, form. like, the ten main characters that are the boys that are, like, trying to get everything worked out and stuff. There's the chief, and then there's Jack, who's, like, the... Head. He's the head of a boys' choir that ends up getting there, and so he ends up being the head of the hunters, which is the, his choir. And so then there, there's them. So there's like the hunters, and then like the people just, who just help out the chief. And then there's the little ones, who are just the little kids that aren't really like they can't really comprehend what's going on, I guess. Like, they know that they're on an island and stuff, but they don't get that, you know. What? Well, like, they're scared a lot because they just don't know what what's what, and they don't, they don't really get what's going on with the older boys, and that they're just trying to stay alive and stuff. Uh -huh. They just kind of eat whenever they eat. They just play, you know. Uh-huh. So what's kind of the central conflict? What's the main problem um, in the story? They're trying, so the chief, what is his name? It's not Simon, it's the other one, it's, it's a, 
Uh, yeah, his name is at the very beginning. Roger. No. Ralph. 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 Ralph okay, so right. Ralph is the chief, and he's trying to get this law in order, and he's tr he's so he has like this setup thing where like there's this conch, which is like this seashell thing, and if you have it, then you can talk, and he's trying to create like rules and stuff that are going to be best for the boys. And so they put up shelters, but he's him and this guy Simon are pretty much the only one who do any work on those. And everyone else just plays. And after a while, he he realizes, like, because he knows that they won't ever be able to be rescued without a fire, and he knows that they won't survive without um, shelter and without food. And so he's trying to always have that in, but then also he's a little boy and he wants to play. And so he's trying to get all of that worked out at the same time, and then all of the other boys around him pretty much just want to play all the time. So he's trying, so he, like, he tries to get them to help him and for them to see we can't be rescued, we're going to be stuck here if we don't, if we don't have this fire going and we're going to die if we don't have the shelter and stuff, but a lot of them can't see it and so they just end up playing and so... A lot of it is about how there's, like, that conflict with him and then about how the other boys kind of split off and end up creating their own clan that just pretty much plays all the time. So why is it such a sad book? Because... <laughs> because little kids kill each other. Because they end up killing each other? Yeah. Because the one boy Jack, he's the um, leader of the men's, or the boys choir, he decides that he wants, he just thinks that hunting is the most important thing that you could ever do, which it is important because they want meat and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's not as important as getting rescued or having huts or just getting food for, you know, mm -hmm. and so he just decides to stop following Ralph's orders mm -hmm. and to just split off and they end up becoming really savage. They like paint themselves. They don't wear hardly anything. They all they can think about is like hunting and they end up killing a pig and they don't like they end up eating the meat, but the thing for them is like they bathe in the pig's blood, literally. They're just so Savage? Yeah, they're, they become so backwards and savage that they just end up It's disturbing. Yeah. And then they like put the head, the pig's head on a stick and they put it out in front for everyone to see that they've killed the pig and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're just all downhill from there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. And it would be a lot easier to read if it was like adults doing it. But they're little kids. Well, that's what um, the first time around when I was going to do Lord of the Flies, and I didn't want to, and it was getting more and more painful, one of my um, teachers, mentors, just said, just pretend like they're men. Just That'll just help you so much. And, just, and that's, I think, how she, um, you know, he, William Golding put it, had these dynamics take place among children, I think, to... Um, magnify the impact yeah you know if it would have been men it wouldn't have been as disturbing and so it was boys because he wants you to have an emotional response to uh, to these choices and this behavior and ask yourself a lot of important questions about a lot of different themes what were some of the themes that that you saw in the book and discussed in your class and things um there was the theme of of law Mm -hmm. And having laws. There was the theme of. Uh, I don't remember all of them. There was like. There like was, hunting and killing. Yeah, there was a lot of symbolisms with the pig that oh. they talked about. Uh huh. And how, like, the one kid's name was Piggy. <laughs> uh huh. And then there was a symbolism with Simon. Because? Because he was, like, the prophet oh, figure. Uh huh. And. So friendship would be a theme. Yeah. And as, like, as the boys 
start to, like as the other boys like become part of this clan that's the cool thing and you you're savage and face painted and part of the wild and stuff piggy and ralph become a lot closer mm -hmm. at the beginning of the book like ralph is like making fun of piggy mm -hmm. and by the end of the book they're really good friends mm -hmm. and he learns to like and mm -hmm. he ends up relying more on piggy and mm -hmm. actually like so order and mm -hmm. government and needs and leadership mm -hmm. um, are all really important themes that the book touches on. You can have really great conversations about, well, what laws should they have had and what laws would you have in that situation and yeah. what is friendship and who should they have been loyal to, loyalty and trust and, and all those kinds of concepts are really, really magnified in this environment. And it's not, it's not very long, 200 pages in this little tiny paperback um, it's not a very long book. Yeah. And uh, Forms is another one I have in here. Religion, love versus hate, fear versus faith, um, reason versus passion. You know, do, are you going to stop and think through what you're doing? Or are you just going to go with how you're feeling? Yeah, a the lot of times... The idea of mobs and mob violence is something that happens. Like, whenever they all end up killing Simon, whenever he comes in to yell, like, I don't... Oh, yeah, he says what the dead thing is, the dead body or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, coming in and yelling, and then they all end up killing him. And Ralph doesn't want to, and neither does Piggy, but they end up kind of being a part of it because it's just spur of the moment. It's just everyone's doing it. That's what we're here for, you know. And so they end up being a part of it. They don't, like, they're, they're not the instigators of it or anything like that, but... Then afterwards, they just have all this guilt. And so they try to cover it up with, like, yeah, we, we didn't do that. We weren't a part of that, you know? But you can tell they have so much guilt for doing it because it was just got reaction. It was just because they didn't think about it. Yeah. So having experienced the whole Lord of the Flies thing, why do you think it's required reading in so many schools? Do you think it's a good thing that it's required reading? I don't know if they don't like I don't see how a lot of teachers can have a good discussion on this though because so many people don't know how to have a good discussion okay and so I don't know how they would make it be good to read like you know hmm. like they they would just be like yeah and they shouldn't have done that or I, I don't know like well what do you what are some important things you think nobody would miss that maybe are things that are talked about most of the time when it's read do you think there's value there? Do you think there's yeah. some important reasons why you think youth should read it? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> because why? Um, Let me ask it this way. What would society be like if everyone read it? They probably wouldn't. Do, <laughs> do you think it depends do you, do you think it depends too much on the on how it's mentored and taught? Do you think that's really, really important? Or do you think just the book itself and the message of the book could help people to be better people or better citizens or I better guess leaders? just the book itself, but I mean a lot of people could just take it the wrong way and just have it be a depressing another depressing book that they read. Yeah. And a lot of people just read for plot. So yeah. it would just be like, Oh yeah, that depressing book. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's a deep book mm -hmm. and it's probably one that needs to be well taught well mentored mm -hmm. and um, and those themes and those concepts and ideas need to be discussed and kids need to see but I think if it's done if it's done right and done well they might have bring some depth into you know their participation in society or you know even understanding things just basic concepts of, of friendship or leadership or you know you know, it's a, it would be a really, actually a really good one. <laughs> you want two depressing books in a row, you could read this one with the Oxbow incident and really kind of analyze, you know, why are we like that? Why do we do that? Why do we, you know, follow the group? Why do we go with what's popular? Why do we listen to leaders who tell us to do things that are bad for us? And then we experience all this guilt afterward. And how am I doing that today in my life? You know, what leaders and authorities am I just kind of blindly following and not really thinking about what I'm doing, you know, re, you know, discuss Chicken Little with it too, and 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 blind, you know, the blind following the blind almost. There's also this really sad moment where 
there's like everyone is established on their little hilltop or whatever, like the one group that's savage and stuff, and they end up like kidnapping, well not kidnapping, but like taking as prisoner the two twins, who are pretty much the only loyal ones left, besides Simon and Piggy. And then Ralph tries to like talk to them and they can't really talk to them because it's either they're killed or they have to kill Ralph. And that's what's really sad about it because like if they don't kill him, then the other boys will just be like, okay, well we'll just kill you. But if they, you know. It's crazy too to think how people can become that hardened. How can you be in an environment that's so controlled by fear you know, and you think about things that happened in the 20th century, and that kind of thing did happen. Kill or be killed. You know? Participate in evil or, you know, be killed yourself. Yeah. And, and it happens in real life, and it's important to establish your loyalties and know what your allegiances are and recognize that you would rather be true to your conscience then stay alive in some certain circumstances, you know? It would be better to do what you know you're supposed to do and be true to yourself and then take the consequences of whatever they're going to be than to live with yourself after such horrible, horrible choices. Yeah. And I don't know how the boys would handle going back to regular society after that. Yeah. They, I just, it seems like they just become criminals. I mean, I... Yeah. Maybe they could work it out, but, I mean, it's just so much psychological damage. Yeah. Anyway, it is a painful book, and we know it is, and, but we know a lot of you have to read it, and some of you really should read it. And, you know, she had it required for her class, which is a liberal arts classroom, and um, I trust those that are choosing her books. And I don't want to read it either, and, you know, maybe you could wait till you're a little bit older if you're not really ready to dive in. But it's going to be painful, but it could also be profound. I mean, we could probably sit here for a few more hours and talk about all kinds of things and what would we do and why was it like that and what would the implications be and all that kind of stuff. Look for yeah. the symbols. There's a lot of symbols in the book. The fire is a symbol. Yeah. The conch is a symbol. Individuals are symbols. Behaviors are symbols. Um, and, uh, and all of those different themes. Write out some really good discussion questions and find a friend that will talk to you about it so you can have a good experience in it and you can get good things out of a really broken book. And it is broken, um, not bent, because it, it's clear what's good and what's evil. Yeah. And, and, and they have natural consequences. And like Reagan was talking about, that kind of, that kind of guilt and, and, and self and, and remorse and things that comes with bad choices. Anyway, Lord of the Flies by William Golding. If this was helpful, please pass it on to a friend and like us on Facebook, join our email list, and comment below, how was your experience with Lord of the Flies? Did you hate it? Were you forced to read it? Would you be willing to revisit it and why? We'll see you next time.